Hi, it's Monty from Sportive Cyclist and in this video I am going to be reviewing the Wahoo Element Bolt Bike GPS computer. Now this video is part of a mini series where I look at the best bike computers in the mid price range range and the upper end of that price range I've arbitrarily set at about $300, $250. Pounds. So if you want to check out the other videos in this series then I'll link to them in the description below. Let's get inside and let's get on with this review. It's not warm. Another good use for the Castelli Perfetto gloves. So what is the Wahoo Element Bolt? Well, you've guessed it. It's a bike computer. It sits on your handlebars or in the special out front mount. It records your ride data whilst you're traveling around. And once you've finished your ride, you can upload your ride data to your ride data storage app of choice, which really means Strava. Basically, the Element Bolt does everything you need from a modern bike computer other than it does not have full onboard navigation on the device itself. But we'll come onto that and whether it's really required. So where does the Element Bolt sit in the Wahoo range? Well, the Bolt was Wahoo's second proper bike computer. It came after the Element. Now you can still buy the Element, just not on Wahoo's own website. So right now there are only two bike computers in the Wahoo Element range. We have the Element Bolt, which sits at the bottom, and we have the Wahoo Element Roam, which is the color device, slightly bigger, slightly more expensive, which sits at the top. So you can either say that the Wahoo Element Bolt is second in Wahoo's Element range, or you can say it's bottom of the range. Either way, pretty straightforward. So how much is it? Well, the device only will set you back 185 English pounds right now or $230. If you want to get the bundle, which also includes the heart rate strap and the speed and cadence sensor, that will set you back 245 pounds or $330. Quick comment about age. Yes, I know that this device has been out for over three years. If I look back in my Wiggle order review history, I can see that I ordered it in August 2017. Now, despite its age, there's no sign of Wahoo putting the Element Bolt out to pasture. They're still updating it regularly with software updates, pushing them through the app. It certainly doesn't feel as if the software is weighing down the hardware. It's still as snappy as it ever was. When you look at the range, the Bolt and the Roam sort of make sense. Two bike computers serving slightly different segments of the market. Let's face it, they seem to be pretty busy at Wahoo working on their indoor trainer range and also their recently released smartwatch. Now, another attraction of owning this device for many years so I can actually comment a little bit on customer service. I had to return an Element Bolt because the device wasn't working. I can't remember quite why, but what I can say is that the process itself was really easy. I sent the device back to their European hub and they quickly dispatched me another one. Now, despite only sending back the device, they sent me a full set of sensors with the new device that they sent out. So I've ended up with double the amount of speed sensors and bike attachments and whatnot. Top marks to Wahoo for their customer service. So why did I buy the Wahoo Element Bolt? Well, we have to search back in the mists of time to find the answer to that one. Basically, I had a Garmin Edge 510 and it was giving up the goat. I had my sportive cyclist blog, you should check it out. And I decided to write a post about the next generation Garmin, which was the 520. As part of that, decided to buy the equivalent new Wahoo Element device, which was the Bolt. Now, after having written that review, and having tested both of those devices fairly extensively, it was the Bolt that remained on my handlebars. And that continued until fairly recently when Brighton, another bike GPS manufacturer, sent me the new Rider 750 to test. And I also decided to buy the Garmin Edge 530 in order to make these comparison series of videos. And well, here we are. But if we look at not what I say, but what I do, or more specifically my Strava record where you'll see what bike computer I've been using to record my rides, well, the past two to three years, the vast majority of my rides have been recorded on the Element Bolt. And thusly, we can discern that I've been very, very happy with it. So what is in the box? Well, the problem with buying a bike computer two or three years ago is I've thrown out the box. But the helpful thing, because Wahoo sent me that replacement device I talked about, I've got the bottom half of the second one. So what do we get? We get a range of zip ties. Now, interestingly, not interestingly, Wahoo decide 
It's the, the mount for your handlebars, or they describe it as for the stem, is affixed with zip ties, which to be honest, I'm not as happy about as I am with the Garmin's, which are attached with rubber bands. This is where the gloves are not helpful. More zip ties, more zip ties. That is the mount. And then we have our speed and cadence sensors. So as I alluded to, I bought the bundle, which came with the heart rate strap and the speed and cadence sensor. That there's the speed sensor here and the cadence sensor here. So these are dual band sensors. They'll connect both with AMP Plus and BLE or Bluetooth Smart. And the nice thing about them, which is pretty common these days, admittedly, is that neither of these sensors uses an external magnet. Now the OGs amongst you might remember in days gone by, you had to attach a magnet to the spokes of your wheel and also somewhere else for the cadence sensor. And the magnet passing the sensor would record the speed that you were going at. That no longer happens. I think they contain accelerators, accelerometers, 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 science, and that's how they measure your speed and cadence. Anyway, these are fine, I like them, and uh, hopefully they're pretty robust. So in terms of mount, the bolt comes with, as I said, the handlebar slash stem mount, but also the one that you're most likely to use is the out front mount, which is quite neat because it's shaped on the underside so that it integrates with the back of the bike computer with the back of the element bolt and forms what Wahoo claims is the most aerodynamic bike computer. I just think it looks pretty neat and of all the out front mounts, it is absolutely my favorite. Now the other interesting factoid about the Wahoo out front mount is that it's got a little screw that goes through the back and into your bike computer here. An interesting thing about that, if you're participating in a UCI race, is that by screwing the device to the mount, which is attached to the bike, it can be included in the weight of your bike so that your bike, which I'm sure is ultra light, meets the minimum weight requirement for UCI races. Important one, that one. So what does it look like? Well, I guess, you can judge whether you like it or not. I bought one of the original ones, which is in a dark gray plastic, but you can now buy them in black. In terms of size, well, it's a pretty small device. Let's get out the ruler. Where's the ruler? Useless. I mean, I could measure this. All right, I've written down the dimensions that I got off the website. So it's about 75 millimeters long. Do they agree with that? Yes, they do. In terms of width, it's about 45 millimeters. Depth wise, it's about 20 millimeters. But more relevantly, let's compare it with other devices. We've got the Garmin Edge 530, and I think we can see that the bolt is significantly smaller. Similar sort of depth. The new Rider 750, again, smaller in terms of length. Okay, so it's a lightweight design, but feels pretty sturdy. Now the buttons, which you've got two on the side, one on the other, which is the power button, and then three on the front, all have this sort of rubberized texture that feels pretty weather tight to the point where these indented buttons on the front of the device do actually collect water. If you've run out of water in your bidon, you can have a little slurp off the top of your bike computer. Now a feature of the Wahoo Element bike computers is that in addition to the screen, they also have rows of LEDs. Now the Element Bolt only has the single row of LEDs which stretches across the top of the device. And the LEDs, which light up blue, red, and green, can be used for a number of things, including showing certain pieces of ride data. And if, like me, you have the Garmin Varia radar system, you can use them to indicate when cars are approaching from the rear and when it's safe afterwards. Now the device charges at the front using a standard micro USB port and the charging port is covered during normal use with this rubberized cover. Nice blue color in my case. Now just so we're clear we mentioned the mount. The mount uses a Wahoo specific mounting design so the element bolt won't fit on your Garmin standard devices. You will need to use the Wahoo specific mount. Now a word about the screen. Firstly, it is not touchscreen. You will have to use the buttons in order to navigate about this device. Secondly, it is not 
colour. In fact, it is grayscale. And let's face it, given this is a small device, the screen is not large either. But the screen isn't defined by what it isn't. I actually find it incredibly easy to read, particularly when I'm out on a ride. The contrast is very high. The screen definition is very clear when I'm using the mapping screen. Admittedly, it's not the most detailed map in the world, but it's very clear. The lines are very clean. I don't consider it a particular negative that this is not touchscreen and nor is it colour. <sighs> so cold, gotta keep moving. So as I rest the camera on my half completed new cycling workbench, let's move on to integrations. Integrations, what the hell are integrations? So Wahoo says that the Element Bolt is the most integrated bike GPS on the market, whatever that means. So the Bolt via the Wahoo Element app integrates with all the major software apps on the market. So that's Strava, Komoot, Ride with GPS, Training Peaks, Best Bike Split, Today's Plan, I said Training Peaks already, Trainer Road, and for the mountain biking folks amongst you, MTB Project and Single Tracks. Now like Garmin Edges, the Element Bolt has extra integration with Strava, so it works fully with the live segment features when you approach one of your favorited starred segments. It will alert you, it will time you specifically on that segment and show you how you are doing both against your previous best time and I think against whoever is the segment leader on that segment. Either way, it integrates pretty well. Hardware-wise, the Element Bolt communicates via Ant Plus and Bluetooth with all of the weird and wonderful sensors and other communications pipes that you might expect. Smart trainer wise, it can use the Ant Plus FEC protocol. So it will communicate with and control your smart trainer based on whatever workout it is you're seeking to do. Now Wahoo also unsurprisingly calls out the specific ability of the Element Bolt to communicate with its kicker range of smart trainers. Now in practice, I don't know whether that offers any additional functionality versus the standard Ant Plus FEC protocol. Perhaps you do, if you do, let me know in the comments below. But the likelihood is if you are a kicker owner already, you're going to want to remain within the Wahoo ecosystem and therefore you're going to be pretty well disposed to buying an Element bike computer. Now talking about expensive things that I don't own, the Bolt will communicate with the electronic gear systems of all three major bike group set manufacturers. So it will display things like what gear you're in and the amount of battery that's left on those electronic shifters. Now moving to things I do own and a review is definitely coming up. The Bolt will communicate with the Garmin Varia radar system. And I have to say the integration works very well. So let's move on to what it's like to use the device. Well, in terms of setup, it's been a long time since I've had to do it, but I recall it being very easy indeed. I think it was simply a case of scanning a QR code on the screen using my smartphone and that kicked off the whole process of installing the app and getting the device set up. Which speaks to the general philosophy that Wahoo have adopted of being smartphone first. And that theme continues in day-to-day -day use of the device. The way that the smartphone app and the device integrates works really, really well. I like the split of what can be done on the device versus what can be done in the smartphone. And it generally makes the experience of using the device uncomplicated and ultimately a pleasure. Now talking about buttons, I mentioned that this isn't a touchscreen device, so we are limited to making all of the changes and moving around the device using the buttons, but Wahoo have been very smart about how they use the buttons and they change the context, in particular the three on the front. As you scroll through the screen, the little label that sits above the button will change depending on what the button will do in that particular context. And again, that just makes the whole process of using the device that little bit more intuitive. And whilst you can't change the data fields whilst you're out and about on a ride, you can use the buttons on the side to change the number of data fields that are displayed on the screen. And having set the priorities of the data fields that you want to display, it will show you those in order. So if you reduce it down to two, it will show you your top two priority data fields. And if you increase it to the maximum number, well, it will show you the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine data fields that you want to see 
on the screen. And then a final word on buttons, and it sounds daft, but these three that are on the top, because of their orientation being on top of the device and you're pressing down on them, either on the mount or on the handlebar, makes them very easy to use. It simply requires a downward press. Whereas sometimes when you're using other devices, whether it's the Garmin Edge 530, which has buttons on the front edge, which feels slightly odd and difficult to use, or indeed buttons on the side like these ones, they can be just that little bit hard to use. It feels sometimes like buttons on the side require you to almost squeeze the device for fear of unlocking it from the mount and having it drop on the floor. So a simple thing about having three buttons on the top, easy to press. Again, it's just another thing that makes the Bolt a pleasure to use. Oh, I really need to put this down. Oh, I think I'm getting hypothermic. Okay, recording ride data and uploading it, continuing the theme really. Well, it's really, really straightforward. It's literally a case of hitting start on the device, stop when you finished, and provided you're either connected to your phone via Bluetooth or the device is connected to your home's Wi-Fi or any Wi-Fi system really, the root data will automatically upload first to the Wahoo Element app and then onward to wherever you want your ride data to go, which is Strava. Now navigation, the elephant in the room sort of. It's becoming increasingly common for mid-range bike computers to have full onboard navigation capability. Now it's important to say that the Bolt does not have onboard navigation. That's not to say that you can't use it for navigating. What are you talking about? Mom? The Bolt, unlike the Edge 530 and the Rider 750, does not know where you are on the mapping screen. It's simply directing you around a series of GPS coordinates. It doesn't know what roads you are on. So if you go off route, the device won't be able to reroute you back to your route. That's distinct from devices which have proper onboard navigation where they know what streets and what roads you're on. And ideally, they'll be able to create you a route to get you back on course. Now, should you care about this lack of full onboard navigation? Well, I don't. The Element Bolt actually has a raft of really good navigation capabilities. For instance, you can download routes to the device either using the Wahoo Element app or if you have the Bolt linked to your Strava or Ride With GPS account, as soon as you create a route in that system, then it will sync with the device and can be selected from within the menus of the Bolt device itself. If the route file has turn-by-turn -turn directions, then the Bolt will display those directions as you are riding. It will alert you to upcoming turns. There is a neat cue sheet that will show you all of the different turns involved in your route. Now the map screen, while it's not being particularly detailed, and as mentioned, not in color, is clean and clear, and I've always been able to work out where I'm meant to go whilst using it to navigate on a route. And if you need live routing assistance, then you can obviously use the smartphone app and then send whatever route you create direct to the device and use it to follow on the road. Now this lack of full onboard navigation might be a bit of a deal breaker for some of you, but for me it obviously hasn't been. I've used this bike computer for the best part of three years, almost continuously, both in places that I know, following routes in places that I don't, and I've never had a problem, and I've never wished that I had full onboard navigation on the Bolt device. Take that as you will. Now a quick word about computing umph which is a technical term. There's absolutely no lag when you move between the pages, between the data screens, and when you zoom in and out on the map, there's a slight delay as it re-renders. It's not much in the grand scheme of things. I'm not sure whether that's because the hardware within the device is particularly strong or because the software is quite lightweight. Let's remember it's not color and it doesn't have a touch screen. But nonetheless, in terms of having sufficient computing power to do what it needs to do, I can confirm that there is a big tick in the Wahoo Element Bolt box. Battery life, everyone loves battery life. Everyone asks about battery life. Now, interestingly, not interestingly, the Wahoo Element Bolt is stated as having 15 
hours of battery life as opposed to the Brighton Rider 750 and the Garmin Edge 530, both of which are stated as having 20 hours of battery life. But in real world riding, I've never wished that this had more battery life. I've never ridden anywhere near 15 hours in one go. It definitely goes multiple rides between charges and I've never felt overly pressured to keep it charged. Hell, if I needed to, it's got a USB port, it's not exactly difficult. So what do I like about this bike computer? Well, all of the above really. I've touched on most of the aspects of the Element Bolt that I use regularly and for the most part I like all of them. In terms of features that the Element Bolt has that other bike GPS's don't, I particularly like the LEDs. I think they work well and they integrate really well with other features including my new Garmin Varia which I really should stop going on. So what don't I like about the Element Bolt? Well, I sort of wanted to say that the design looks a bit dated, but on reflection, it really doesn't. I've owned it for three and a half years and it still looks quite smart and quite sharp. And overall, I like the aesthetics. And over the course of my ownership, I've definitely dropped it a few times and it's got the odd scratch, but really it's holding up well and still looks good. Most of the other things that you might not like about it, it's diminutive size, it's grayscale screen, it's lack of touch screen, the fact that you rely quite heavily on the smartphone app and can't change all of the settings on the device. These are all deliberate design choices on the part of Wahoo to suit a particular type of rider and they certainly seem to suit me. If you want something different then clearly you're going to want a different bike computer but if you can get on board with those design choices then I think you'll be very happy with the Wahoo Element Bolt. So in summary the Wahoo Element Bolt and indeed the whole Element ecosystem including the app is very intuitive and easy to use. The screen is very clear and bright, it has good contrast and the data fields are visible in all lighting conditions except perhaps eclipses. The integration with the Wahoo Element app works very well, it keeps fiddling around with the settings on the device to an absolute minimum which I like. The Bolt doesn't have true mapping capability, it won't reroute you if you go of course, but I found the navigation features absolutely fine and more than enough for my needs. The device looks attractive and Wahoo claims that when it's installed in the out front mount then it's a little bit aero and come on people we all need a little more aero. So a full review is on my blog, link in the description below. If you want to see my video on the best mid-priced bike GPS featuring the Wahoo Element Bolt, the Garmin Edge 530 and the Brighton Rider 750, then you should click this video up here. And if you want to see my full detailed reviews on each of these devices, then you should click to watch the playlist of said videos down here. I've been Monty, this is Sportive Cyclist, the Mammal Channel, and I'll see you in the next video.